for this video will be installing Docker on Ubuntu 18.04. With Docker is an application that simplifies the process of managing application processes in containers. Containers let you run applications in resource isolated processes, though similar to virtual machines, but containers are more portable, more resource friendly, and more dependent on the host operating system. We'll begin by first always updating your new um, virtual machine. Now I'm going to install some um, packages that are required for the rest of the process. So Yes. Uh, restart. Yes. Okay, this is the GPG key for the official Docker system. Okay, now this is the Docker repo to app sources. After you complete that, you will once again update. Okay, now we'll go ahead and install Docker CE. Now that's that's done. I'm gonna check the status of it. It is running. Okay, now for um, Docker, executing the Docker command without sudo. Um, Docker command can only be run, could be run the root user or by user in the Docker group which is usually automatically created during the Docker installation process. If you attempt to run Docker command without prefixing it with sudo or without being in the Docker group, it won't let you. So to avoid having to put sudo every single time when you put Docker commands in, you can add your username to that group by doing the following. For my user, it's just Ubuntu. Now you're going to have to, um, I'm going to basically log out and log back in as user for those permissions to take place. Okay, now that has been added, um, now 
Docker command. Um, you will usually, um, after you put Docker, you're going to have an option, command, and argument. So if you want to view all available subcommands for Docker, all you have to do is put in Docker. Now, if you want to view um, options to a specific command, you put, let's say for this, I'm going to put Docker out. So it will, it will provide more information regarding that. How to view system-wide information about Docker. Put info after Docker. Now, working with containers. Okay, so Docker containers are built from Docker images. By default, Docker pulls these images from Docker Hub, a Docker registry managed by Docker, the company itself. Any, anyone can host their Docker images on Docker Hub. So both applications and Linux distributions, you'll need to have images hosted there. Now to check to check whether you have access or download images from Docker. For example, type the following. As you're going to see, Docker was initially unable to find the Hello World image locally. So it downloaded the image from Docker Hub, which is the default repo. Once the image downloaded and Docker created a container from the image, an application within the container ex executed displaying the message. You can search for images available on Docker Hub by using Docker command with the search command. For example, I will search Docker search Ubuntu and you have plenty of options that will appear. Okay, for this, I will do Docker pull So after the, an, an image has been downloaded, you can run an, a container using download an image with a run um, sub, sub command, as you saw with the hello world example. If an image has been has not been downloaded with Docker, is executed when the runs um, when the run sub command, the Docker client would first download the image, then run a container using it. So to see the images that have been downloaded to your computer, you will type Docker images. The output should look something like this. Images that you use to run containers can be modified and used to generate new images, which may then be uploaded, pushed in technical terms to Docker Hub. So I'm gonna go put so the Hello World container you ran in the previous step is an example of a container that runs an exit after emitting a test message. Containers can be much more useful than that, and they can be interactive. After all, they are similar to virtual machines, only more resource friendly. So, as an example, let's run a container using the latest image of Ubuntu. The combination of TACI and TACT switches give you, you interactive shell access into the container. So now command prompt should change and look like the following. This will tell you that you are now working inside that container. Note the container ID in the command prompt. In this example right there, you will see the number. This is the container ID. 
this is important because you will need, need the container ID later to identify the container when you want to remove it. Now you can run any command inside, inside that container. For example, let's update the package database inside the container. You don't need to prefix any command with sudo because technically we should be already operating inside the container as a root user. Voila. So this is all taking place inside that container already that's on your Ubuntu server. So let's do something else, for example. Let's install node. Now I'm not gonna be using any of this, this is for the example. Now let's check what version. Okay. Now, if you want to manage Docker containers, after you've been using Docker for a while, you have many active running and inactive containers on your computer. So if you want to view active one, you would type Docker PS. So I need a, I need an exit first. So because I already I'm in that container and I tried to do Docker PS in that container, nothing happened because Docker isn't installed on that container, which that would be kind of crazy if it was. But so now I'm going to try to get out of the, out of this container back onto the server. Exit. Now I am back on the server. Now if you want to view all the active ones. As you can see, there we started with two containers, one from Hello World image and another from Ubuntu image. Both containers are no longer running, but they still exist on your system, but they're kind of, because they're inactive, they're kind of hidden. So you have to have another switch to get that um, container to show up. PS and the switch is this. Hey. Now, if you want to view the latest container that you created, you have to pass it with this switch. Which is L. Now, to start or stop a container, followed by the container ID. So, I need to go back up. Okay, now I want to start that container itself. Now you go back to Docker PS and now it's running. Now if you want to um, stop the running container, you can use its name instead. So Docker stop. Now, once that's done, once you come to the decision that you no longer need a container anymore, you can remove it with docker rm command. Again, using either the command ID or the name. Use the Dr. PS switch a command to find the container ID or the name container associated with the hello world. So now I will remove hello world. You can start a new container and give it a name using the 
the name switch. So hyphen hyphen name. You can also use the hyphen hyphen RM switch to create an, a container that removes itself when it's stopped. See that you would have to um, see Docker run help command for more information about that. Containers can be turned into images which you can use to build new containers. Let's look at how that works. When you start up a Docker image, you can create and modify and delete files just like you can with virtual machines. That changes that you make will only apply to the container. You can start and stop, but once you destroy with the Docker RM command, the changes will be lost for good. This section, I will be showing you this in, in, in this section, I'll be showing you how to save the state of a container as a new Docker image. After in, installing node inside the Ubuntu container, you will now have a container running off an image, but the container is different from the image you use to create it. But you want to use the node container as a basis for a new image later. So for us to make that node become its own image, um, we will um, commit the changes to a new Docker image instant by doing the following docker commit so the m is a switch is for the commit message that is added node and then the A is used to specify the um, creator or author. So that would be that would be me. Uh, that's been done. When you come into image, the new image is um, saved locally on the computer. Now, later you can push that Docker image to the Docker Hub. Now, I want to see that new image that I just created. So. My bad. So image, as you can see, that one we just created is right here. The new image that we created, which is basically derived from an existing Ubuntu image from the Docker Hub. Now, the size different reflects the change that we actually created. And in this example, the change was the node JS was installed. So next time that you run a container using Ubuntu with node JS pre-installed, you can just use that new name. You can also build an image from a Docker file, which lets you to automate the installation of software in a new image. However, that's outside of this video for right now. Okay, now, so the next um, part of this is basically creating that new image from the existing images. So now for us to push it to um, Docker Hub. So next step, we log in to Docker Hub. So now you use your password from the Docker Hub.
So now we can push by going docker push and Now, this process may take um, some time to complete as it uploads the image, but when it's complete, now that that's done, I will show you now, if you go to the Docker Hub into your profile and go to repos, it will, as you can see, it says it was just updated a few seconds ago, and that was because of that last that push that you just did. Now that that was um, I'm su I'm successfully pushed to Docker Hub. Now, anytime if you want, you can Docker pull that if onto a new um, system with that image that you created. That was um, exactly what you created before you pushed it.